Well, good morning. Um, it's Wednesday, the 23rd of August, and uh, our Old Testament reading is 119 Psalm verses 105 to 176. We'll be looking at some of these verses. Your New Testament reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, you out there in the Facebook audience, I, I hope that you'll be reading through the Bible with us. just takes 14 minutes a day. You get through the Bible in a year, and we that are here in church, we're going to read together, uh, starting with verse 105 in the 119th Psalm. We'll read responsibly for as far as I feel like reading. Uh, we'll start on verse 105. I'll read that. We'll read 106 together and so on uh, down until I uh, stop. Verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. Accept, I beseech thee, thy free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgment. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. I hate vain thoughts, but the law do I love. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Depart from me, evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according unto thy word that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold thou me up, and I shall be safe, and I will have respect unto the statues continually. Thou hast trodden down all them that err from thy statues, for their deceit is falsehood. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore I love thy testimonies. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. I have done judgment and justice. Lead me not to thine oppressors. Be surety for thy servant, for good let not the proud oppress me. Mine eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy test <coughs> righteousness. Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy, and teach me thy statutes. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know my testimonies. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. For they have made void thy law. And we'll stop there at verse 26. Let us pray, 126. Lord, thank you now for the word of God, this precious 119 psalm uh, that magnifies thy word in all 176 verses. Praise the Lord. Make it real to our hearts today. Save that soul nearest hell. Reclaim a backslider. Give Christians higher ground. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now, um, we start out in verse 105, 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, some of you that are here today, you're confused, uh, you're troubled, you have, you have no hope, uh, things aren't going well, because you don't have uh, the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your path. Uh, uh, what a wonderful thing it is! I uh, see. I don't know. I don't know how this Facebook works, but it says here, uh, my friend uh, Guy Mall from Arizona. It's three hours earlier there. It's pretty early there, but he was saved in uh, Milwaukee, and he's a preacher out in Arizona. Bless him. Uh, he's my dear friend. I'll just tell a little story about Guy Mall. He came all this way to Daytona Beach. This is. Um, we're not a real dignified formal church, so I can say these things before I get in 119 Psalm. But Guy Mall came all the way. He and his dear wife, he's got the most precious wife in the whole world, and she's right there at his side working with him and, and ministering. 
And uh, they came all the way from Arizona in his ministry and came here to Daytona Beach, Florida to see your preacher, just to see me. They knew me from uh, Milwaukee, and they made a special trip down here, and we had a wonderful time together uh, on his visit and their ministering. You know, I'm glad that uh, people from my past, from Milwaukee and elsewhere, uh, mostly from Milwaukee, are spread around the country doing God's work and preaching and doing those things. But God bless you, Brother Guy. Uh, you are a blessing, you and your dear wife. Keep it up. Keep winning those precious souls out there on the, on, on the West Coast. Um, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I read it every day. I look at the Bible. I, um, I, I get up in the morning. I listen to it. I read it. I come in my van to, to the church and I listen to the Bible because it's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I'm, I'm doing good. I'm stoked up. I'm ready to go. I met God in the morning when my day was at its best. And his presence came like sunrise, like a glory in my breast. All day long his presence lingered. All day long he stayed with me. And we sailed with perfect calmness o'er a very troubled sea. Other ships were blown and battered. Other ships were sore distressed. But the winds that seemed to drive them brought to me a peace and rest. Then I thought of other mornings with a keen remorse of mine when I too had left the moorings with the presence left behind. So I think I know the secret learned from many a troubled way. You must meet God in the morning if you want him through the day. So I get up early and I meet with God and I, and I get fired up and I, I get going with the Word of God. Then I'm able to be a blessing to someone. I'm able to preach and, and I'm able to, to serve Him and win precious souls that day. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's what you need. That's what I need. It's the only answer. In my texting today, I texted it out. Uh, this uh, I think this is the verse I texted out. And... Um, uh, I think that's the one I did. My, I think it was this particular verse. But anyway, it was from 119 Psalm. But I, I said this, we, we need to let the Bible be our guide. Why do we follow all this stupid worldliness? All these world. Who cares what the world thinks? What does it matter? They have no... The, the, the Bible says the wisdom of God is foolishness to the world, and the wisdom of the world is foolishness to God. I'm just going to base my life on the Word of God and all my decisions and, and my direction is going to be from the Word of God. It's going to be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And let's get back to the Bible. Um, praise God. Uh, so we go on and it says in verse uh, 106, I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgments. Yeah. Why don't you make a vow to God? I'm sick of mealy mouth Christians. Some of you that come in here, some of you sitting in here in church this morning right now, you're so mealy mouth and, well, I'm trying, God. Well, preacher, I can't quit smoking. Well, pastor, I'm just weak. Oh, shut up and, and trust in God. I talk to you every day of my life, and if, if you fail as a Christian, you're the failure, not God. God never fails. You can always trust in God. You still sucking on cigarettes and drinking beer and shacking up, and you're a Christian, a real born again Christian. That's on your part, not on God's part. And I tell people every day. I told this morning again. I counsel people even this morning. It's all up to you. Are you born again? Yes, I'm born again. Well, if you're if you're born again, take advantage of your position in Christ. You don't have to drink anymore. You don't have to smoke anymore. You're a child of God. By faith, you can appropriate it. There's no temptation taken us, but it's common to man as God is faithful and will not suffer you to be tempted above which you are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that you should bear. Any sin you or I do as a Christian, and I do it and you do it, shame on us, because First John says, if you say that you, a one eight, say, if you say that you have no sin, you lie, and the truth is not in you. But if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You don't have to sin. You can beat sin. You, uh, uh, were you saved by faith? Were you saved by just believing? Okay. 
then you can overcome your cigarettes and your alcohol and your sex and your all of your wickedness. You can you can get everything that if you got salvation by grace through faith, you can get victory over sin by grace through faith. You understand that? Quit trying to make a resolution. Oh, bless God, I'm gonna quit smoking. Oh, bless God, I'm gonna quit this. No, just trust God and and have it have victory over it by trusting in Christ. Just the way, just the way uh, uh, you were saved is the way you can be. If you are saved, maybe you need to be saved. Maybe that's your problem. I don't know. Verse seven: I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto Thy word. Except I beseech Thee. Thy free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from my precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken uh, as a heritage forever, for they are rejoicing. I have inclined mine heart to perform thy statues always, even unto the then. I, I hate vain thoughts, verse 13, 113, but thy law do I love. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word, Cory Ten Boom, uh, uh, that sweet dear lady that was in a German concentration camp. She was uh, horrible atrocities were, were performed uh, uh, to her. Uh, and she saw her sister to be raped and killed and on and on. And yet uh, uh, she made that great movie, Hiding Place, and she wrote a book called Hiding Place. Uh, you remember that song years ago? You are my hiding place. Uh, 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 uh. That's another. I think that's a classical song, but they put words to it. But uh, Corey Ten Boom, uh, she used this verse. Thou art my hiding place, and 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 when she uh, she was uh, uh, she had to be stood in a uh, in a yard, and all the women uh, they had to stand in this yard naked, and and uh, and terrible things were going on, and and she would concentrate. There was a little bird that came and sat up on the wall, and 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 she would look at that little bird. And concentrate on God and and not be affected by all the horror and torture and terribleness uh, that was going on. Uh, that wonderful uh, saint of God, Corey Ten Boon, uh, uh, who was in the uh, the Nazi concentration camp uh, uh, as a Jew, um, was terribly as a Christian Jew. Uh, but she had that. Thou art my hiding place. And my shield, I hope in thy word. And that was the verse that she held and, and wrote a book and they made a movie about her. It's probably on YouTube. I don't know. I haven't seen it in years and haven't read the book. But um, she used this verse. The word of God is precious. Even in such a horrible situation she was in, even to see her own sister murdered. She had hatred against those Jews that did all those things for years. She had evidence against them. And then one day... One day, God got a hold of Corey Ten Boom's heart, and she forgave every one of them. She forgave that leader that was the, the head of all that, that caused it all to happen. She had evidence. She burned all the evidence. She got rid of it. And she, you know, there's a wonderful thing in forgiveness, even when, even when atrocities are held against you. I talk to people all the time. They say that they won't get saved because of terrible things that, that happened to them in the past. Uh, uh, you give your heart to Christ, you'll be able to forgive people that have even done terrible things to you. And I heard something just recently of, of some people I know and and said that they, uh, listen, uh, they said, a person does this or that or the other thing because of things that happen in their life. No, you can get saved and get born again. Anything's ever happened in your life, it can be behind you and it can be forgiven if you've done it or if someone's done it against you they can deliver you and you don't have to worry about that adversity anymore and God can give you peace in your heart amen, amen. praise God verse 115 depart from me ye evil doers for I will keep thy commandments of my God you notice every verse it talks about it says precepts or commandments or law it talks about the word of God all the way through 119th Psalm all these 176 verses uphold me according unto thy word the word the Bible the word <laughs> you know what it says here in this you know what God says uh, 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 
<laughs> Do you know what uh, uh, God magnifies above his name? God says he magnifies his word over his name. Whoa. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? <clears throat> he magnifies his word, the precious word of God. That's why I use the King James Bible. I, I want every word of God. I feel sorry for you people. I read every day. I read the, the First John, the whole book, five chapters. It just takes 15 minutes. I read it before I go to bed every night. And uh, uh, First John uh, uh, 2.7, uh, First John 2.7 is the strongest verse in the Bible on the Trinity. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that this is all settled in heaven. The strongest verse in the Bible. And all of the new Bibles, the NIV Bible, all these new Bibles, they're written that, that verse is not in uh, the NIV Bible. And all you, if, you, if you got a Bible, you open it, you call a Bible, and it's not really a Bible. And uh, uh, that uh, fake Bible that you have that doesn't have uh, 1 John 2 7, uh, oh my. Uh, watch out. I've got the word because God magnifies the word over every word of God. The end of Revelation says you better not add to it or take from it. You better check it out and have the word. And in the English language, it's the King James Bible, not the New King James. The King James Bible. The New King James Bible has five, over 5,000 errors in it and changes. Stay clear of it. Apport me according to thy word that I may live. You people say get a life. Uh, 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 you want to get a life. You want to do those things that are that that are pleasing to God and get a life. It tells you here how to do that. Uphold me according unto Thy word that I may live. That's the only way you're going to have a real life. I was talking with my good friend Tony today. We I've known him for years, and and we were talking about what's necessary for him to have victory in his life and to really have a life. And and there's too many people that are sitting in this auditorium today, and there's too many people out there in our viewing audience that you don't have a life because you're not following the Word of God. You're saved, but you're just saved as by fire, like we talked about in First Corinthians. And you have all wood, hay, and stubble in your life, and you're not winning souls, and not having any victory and not living uh, for God and you folks that are in church this morning some of you need to make that decision today you're saying you have all of the ability to live for God and the word of God will change your life but praise God you can have it but you but you choose to leave, live in mediocrity and 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 have a uh, just exist talking to someone today just existing Oh my, my, rise up, you child of God. If you're a born-again Christian, you can do more than you can have a life. And let me not be ashamed of my hope. Don't be ashamed of Christ. Don't be ashamed of the Bible. Stand up for it. Verse 117, hold me up, and I shall be safe. <laughs> and I'll have respect unto thy statues. Continue. See the Bible again. Respect the Bible. Honor the Bible. Honor the Word of God. Follow the Word of God. Remember the first verse we had in 105. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Verse 118. Thou hast trodden down all of them that err from thy statues. You're in trouble if you don't pay attention to the Word of God. <laughs> For their deceit is falsehood. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. The garbage. Therefore, I love thy testimony. See, the psalmist keeps saying he loves the word of God. Amen. Verse 120. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgment. See, there's no fear of God today. Many, many of you Christians that are watching today, and you that are maybe here in church today, um, uh, you have no fear of God. What do you mean fear of God? The fear of God, a good, a good definition. Listen, uh, a good definition of the fear of God is a reverential trust in God with a hatred for evil. How much do you reverence God and reverence His word that you're going to follow it, dear one? And how much do you hate evil? Some of you that are sitting here in church, you don't hate them cigarettes much. That's evil. I haven't had one of them nasty cigarettes uh, for all these years I've been saved. 
I'm going to just tell you, listen now, listen up. You're not going to be much of a Christian if you don't quit smoking. You're not going to be much of a Christian. You'd be very average at the, at the best. I say 48 years ago in three months, I used to smoke three and a half packs a day. I've never had one cigarette all these years. I haven't had a bottle of beer, no whiskey, none of that. Yeah. You think you're somebody? No. But I know what the grace of God is, and, and I, I, I know that I can have, because I have a reverential trust in God with a hatred for evil. And I hate cigarettes. And I hate alcohol. And I hate immorality and fornication and homosexuality and all of the wicked sins because I have a reverential trust in God with a hatred for evil. I don't hate folks, but I hate evil. I hate the evil that's getting you down. You that are going to hell, there's people sitting right here in our audience today that are headed for hell by their own admission to me. They're not a saved person. Oh, I pray to God you'd get saved today. Verse 121, I have done I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to mine oppressors. 122, be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. 123, mine eyes fail for thy salvation, for the word of thy righteousness. Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy, and teach me thy statutes. You know, we, 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 we have to deal with God on the basis of mercy. Amen? God has judgment and he has mercy. I don't want the judgment of God because... I mean, that's the fires of hell, isn't it? I want the mercy of God. I want forgiveness. I want to repent. And by the way, I have repented April 4th, 1969. I'm saved. But, you know, I have to repent on a daily basis, you understand? I need to re You need to repent for your sins of today, and I need to repent of mine and the ones that I did yesterday and the ones that you did. You need to keep short accounts with God as a Christian uh, and repent. Christians need to repent daily. I am thy servant. Uh, give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. Look at verse 126. Look at here, 119, 126. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. <laughs> for they have made void thy law. See, I don't care how many people reject the word of God and reject God. I don't care. It's time for you to work, God, and I'm going to honor your word, and I'm going to see you work, and you're going to do things for your glory. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Verse 125, I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. Again, the testimonies, that's the word of God. It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. Therefore, I love thy commandments. Amen. Above gold. <laughs> I love the Bible above gold, thy commandments. <laughs> Glory to God. Yea, above fine gold. 18 carat gold, 20 carat gold, 22 carat gold. What's the highest? Is 24 carat, is that the highest it goes? I love the Bible better than 24 carat gold. I don't even know you can't. I don't think you hardly have a 24 carat gold ring. It'd be too soft, wouldn't it? Yeah. It'd be too soft, yeah. You just got to keep that in the bar and hoard it. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, I esteem. Look at verse 128. All oh, this parable is so good. And it's 119 Psalm, 176 verses of it. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts, the Bible, concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way. Ooh, that's the one I should text it out today. I might text it out tomorrow. I love that verse. Listen to that verse. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts, the whole Bible, concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way. You know what every false way is? The way of the world. The wisdom of the world. The wisdom of the world is foolishness to God. And the wisdom of God is foolishness to the world. So I esteem all history. I'm just going to be a Bible man. Be a Bible person. Dear friend, here in church and out there, just love the Bible, stand by the Bible. It's contrary. It's different than the world. Who cares? Let the folks go to hell. 
The world's headed for hell in a handbasket. And uh, uh, like it's been said, if, if God doesn't bring judgment on America, he'll have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah because we're as bad as Sodom and Gomorrah. We've got liquor like a river. We've got immorality on every hand. The sodomy, uh, vile affections of homosexual activity. I, I, I saw, uh, I was talking with someone, bless his heart, he's a Catholic. I talked to him yesterday. He, he talked with me afterwards, and uh, he might be watching. He's not here today. He works. Might have been working a day, and, and he might be watching me on Facebook or watch it later. Bless his heart. I won't tell his name. But uh, he made this comment to me. Uh, pray for him. He needs to be saved. He thought he got saved. I says, well, well he says, you're not going to agree with this. I said, okay, go ahead, shoot. I was counseling with him after church yesterday. He says, but I got uh, I got saved when the Pope came to America. He says, I know, Pastor, I know when you was preaching. When I was preaching yesterday, he says, you said there, there ain't no hope in the Pope. That's what you said. <laughs> and I say it again today, there ain't no hope in the Pope. Uh, did, 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 did you know the cardinals in the Catholic Church now, the big shots, bishop, the ones that are way up there high with him? There's a certain uh, legality in, in Catholicism where uh, the cardinals can question the Pope if he goes against the church and the law of the church. And, and they send him a letter, these big shot Catholics that are below him. He's the big boss. He's supposed to be the vicar of Christ, Christ on earth, final authority, the Pope. And uh, they sent him this letter, and, 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 and he, wouldn't, he wouldn't answer them. I mean, this is going on right now, I mean, as, we, as I talk today. So they made it public. They said they've asked the Pope to answer these questions. There's a number of questions about where the Catholic Church, uh, Catholic Church stands, and... The issue she said that really got him saved, you don't get saved by this, I'll tell you that, and ain't no hope the Pope can't save you, I guarantee you that. They might say he's the vicar of Christ and Christ on earth, but there's only one Jesus Christ. There, there, there's a lot of false Jesuses, and the Pope's a false Jesus because they say he's the vicar of Christ, but there's only one that can save you. And, and the issue that really thought made him think the Pope was wonderful, he thought he got saved, was because the Pope said uh, a, a, a reporter, our president calls them fake news. <laughs> our president, he didn't have much good to say about him because he did a lot of lying and things. And I think he's right in many respects. Uh, uh, they have an agenda, and, and uh, in many ways they, they are. They've been fooling people, and, of course, um, uh, people don't have much, uh, they don't trust the news media much anymore. But but a reporter asked the uh, Pope about, when he's here in America, about homosexuality. If it was wrong or if it should be condemned. Or, I don't know exactly how to, and, uh, and he, as the Pope said, I cannot be a judge of that. Now here, this is supposed to be the vicar of Christ. This is supposed to be the head of the Catholic Church. And he can't make a decision that the Bible is very clear on. By the way, not only the Bible is very clear on, but the Catholic Church is very clear on. They're very clear on it, but sad to say, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of queer priests. I mean, you ain't seen the tip of the iceberg with this queer business in the Roman Catholic Church. I mean, you ain't seen nothing. They're coming out now, these little boys that were assaulted by the priest years ago. Their mama and daddy were good Catholics, and they say, keep your mouth shut. They went home and told them that the priest has, uh, molested them. And they said, keep your mouth shut. Because they wanted to be a good Catholic, and they thought the only way to get to heaven was through the priest, the wicked priest. And uh, you ain't seen the tip of the iceberg on that thing. 
But a lot of these people now, because it, because there's no statute of limitations on uh, molesting children, you know. So these folks, they've grown up now, and they're they're coming out and saying, "Hey, this this priest or this bishop or this cardinal or this pope or whoever he was molested me. You ain't seen nothing. You don't know the half of what goes on there in Rome, huh? The Vatican, huh? Well, yeah." But anyway, that's, I said, man, that, that can't save you. Because you like it because the Pope said that he ain't going to make a statement on homosexuality. That, I mean, God bless him. He's a good friend of mine. I won't tell you his name, but Lord, he needs to be saved. And I showed him in the Bible. I, I took the Bible and I showed him Romans chapter 1 and, 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 and how it talked about homosexuality of being vile affections and men with men doing those things that are unseemly and on and on. And it, 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 I read it to him, and I showed it to him, and I says, How dare someone that's supposed to be the leader of a church that the Bible clearly teaches against homosexuality calls it vile affection. Sure doesn't call it gay. They've stole a good word, gay. And they've, um, uh, and they've stolen the, uh, the rainbow promise. That rainbow, don't... <laughs> That, that's a promise from God. Every time you see a rainbow, don't think about queers. <laughs> think about that. Uh, 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 think about that. Uh, that the world will never be destroyed again by a flood. That's the rainbow promise, you know. The rainbow promise is that the whole world we will not have a, a catastrophic world flood again. Well, it'll not happen. We have local floods, and and I seen where was it? I seen yesterday there was people uh, standing on their roof. Uh, was it Texas? Yeah, Texas. Something's on their roof and the family and they had to come get them on a boat. Um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> here we go. Ah, uh, yeah. Verse 129. Oh, verse 120, I got to read. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way. I hate every liar that... that uh, doesn't follow the Bible. Verse 129, Thy testimonies are wonderful. The Bible is wonderful. Glory to God. Why don't you get it, love it, read it. <coughs> if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I did it April 4th, 1969. How many of you here in, my, in the church this morning, you said, I've done it, I'm a saved person. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Several of you need to get saved. How about you out there? Have you been saved? I know guys saved. He's preaching out there in Arizona. Bless his heart. He's on board this morning. God bless you, my dear brother. Say hello to your dear wife. When guys saved, getting folks saved in Arizona. I know others. I think of others uh, that are saved out there, but there might be someone in there right now not saved. Someone in this audience here I know is not saved. Why don't you repent and get saved today here in this audience or out in the viewing audience? Let us pray. I pray these that are not saved would get saved today here in our church service and out there in the viewing audience. You know you're lost. You know you're headed for hell. Would you repent? Ain't no hope without Jesus Christ. Repent. Turn from your sins. You can't atone for your sins. You can't pay for your sins. Only Christ, the blood of Christ, and the power of His resurrection. You must repent and turn to Christ. Pray this sinner's prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. Shed your precious blood. On Calvary's cross, I rose from the grave the third day. For the best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Amen. Lord, we're thankful that we're able to preach this today. 
If you are here, dear one, in the, in the audience and you've trusted Christ and want to talk to you afterwards, you out there in the viewing audience, let me know. We've got church tonight. We're going to have some food and fellowship and ice cream and cake at 5 from 5 to 6. We'll show you some Bible on the, on the big screen here uh, this evening at 5. We'll have church at 6. If you're local, come to church tonight at 6. Come for some fellowship at 5. 501 Ridgewood Avenue, Holly Hill. And we'll be live on Facebook tonight, too, uh, a little bit after 6. So God bless you out there in the viewing audience, uh, you that are out of state. If you're local, come to church tonight. If you're not, uh, if you can tune in, tune in tonight. God bless you.